Another soul born. Very good. know this road already moving in the Hara. <laughs> no, I tell you sometimes people they don't play all night. It's, it happens, it happens almost every game. Okay, and you have had how much? Just one. <coughs> All right. So then you are moving into bad company. <laughs> in third chakra, no? Well, we can have company in any chakra, of course. But in third chakra, especially company is very important because from that you get your image. No? It is the others who are giving you your public image. So then you are seeking company for that. And then here you have the choice between bad company and good company. That's so you have chosen bad company. It happens uh, quite a lot. And this is a snake which brings you down again to first chakra level in conceit. Conceit means that you are telling stories to yourself. Conceit means that you are you're deceiving yourself. You're having a false self-image. And that is exactly what they are saying here. People who are bad company are people who are promoting your own false self-image. People who are saying, yes, you are, I don't know, very uh, smart, you know, you can do it, you can set up your own business or something, even though you're not really prepared to do that. And that will bring you back first chakra because you will start acting accordingly and you will start doing things which you can't really do uh, so then this brings you down. But don't worry many people here in this game will come to this snake uh, it happens to the best of us let's say to make this mistake nothing, nothing wrong you can again move upwards All right. uh -huh. Willpower is increasing. <laughs> All right. You were not born yet? Oh, yes, you were born. Yeah, yeah, here. Yeah. So, one, two, three, four, come on, five, six. Here you are in the middle, on second chakra, middle of the astral plane. And so, second chakra, the astral, is not just about the senses, it is very much about mind and about dreaming. As I said, the astral plane is where we are dreaming. And so, here also we have a lot of, like, daydreams. No? We can have a lot of daydreams. And uh, so, then fantasy comes and this can also create little problems. Although, of course, fantasy also is really fantastic. You know, all the novels and books that are written are just fantasy. So that is also a really great place uh, to be. All right, that we had before. So, and I'm not saying you're going to learn so much about yourself here today because we are many, so it goes quite slow. It doesn't mean that if you are falling on the snake of bad company that you know you are always making this mistake. But if many times you are coming on this place, then you really have to a little bit look at yourself and see, you know, which are my friends? Are they really promoting me in the right direction or maybe in the wrong direction? Yeah? So this is then the thing to look at. Uh, the bracelet. Oh, yeah. My eyes are not good. It was just lying like this and I was seeing it. <laughs> and how much? Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh -huh. So, all right, I explained that before. Huh? Not everybody gets 
the same amount of ice cream, so you didn't get a lot. And you, <laughs> you thought it was not, not fun and you felt envy. And so you have to come back here and feel a little bit like... Mm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Immediately from Tapas Loka, you have done your exercise, you have become your own master. This has led you to this field, which is one of the most important fields of the whole game board, the only one that leads directly to cosmic consciousness, which is the field of spiritual devotion. When you are here, means basically you have learned to stop mind. If you learn to stop mind, then the self, pure consciousness, comes forward. When this happens really in a strong way, then you will realize yourself not as just being pure consciousness, but as being universal consciousness, cosmic consciousness. And you will feel from your own like little personality that is still there, you will feel awe, you will feel love, you will feel, oh wow, this is, you know, this is it. This is God. I mean, to put a name on it. And so if you can go into that feeling and completely surrender to that cosmic consciousness, Bhakti Yoga is about surrendering. Bhakti Yoga is about completely accepting. No? Then immediately this brings you to God, which you are. And so the whole game can now start again. If you want, you can throw another six and play again. <laughs> Next time might not be so easy. But you can try. It does not matter how fast actually you go. No? Actually, uh, if we all want to go fast, if we all want to become enlightened fast, then no problem. If that is really what you want, that is what will happen. But the problem is we want it, yes, but we also want so many other things. And that keeps us involved in the game, which is Leela, which is a divine game. The whole world was created for play to play this game, so there's nothing wrong or not divine about it. No? It is as divine as there. No? But for the moment you are back in cosmic consciousness, eternal bliss and peace. So, very good. Okay. You are the ring, huh? This one? And you have two? two? Okay, you go here. And you have two. Yes, this is called the eye of Shiva. It's a little shell. One, the watch. The watch has one and moves into bad company. <laughs> and then goes in conceit, telling stories to yourself. This one? But you are somewhere, huh? Yeah. This one? Yeah. Uh, two? Three. three. Good. <laughs> one, two, three. So three brings you to another uh, arrow. <laughs> A very big arrow. <laughs> Stairway to heaven. No? Called mercy. 
daya. You see, here we were talking about dreaming, imagination, and so on. And the power of imagination also has one very particular power. That is, you can imagine how other people are doing, how other people are feeling, how the whole world is moving. This power of fantasy allows you to do that and there to feel mercy, to feel the divine there in the game. Like in other places, like here we will feel the divine by going outside of the game. Here we can feel the divine completely in the game, in the play. You can like imagine this whole world and truly if you are really trying to be aware of this whole world and everything happening there, <coughs> you also will come into a kind of bliss which is called Daya and which brings you indeed to the heaven of heavens. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> But not to the end point, cosmic consciousness. Actually, Here you are coming to Brahma Loka. Brahma is the creator. Hmm? So he is the one who started the game. So he is not going to let you off so easily. You still have to again go down to earth. You don't have to go down completely to first chakra. But what you now have to do is again take birth. Because you are now beyond body, completely beyond body. Take birth by going through the three gunas, Satuguna, Rajaguna, Tamaguna. Huh? Meaning Sattva, Rajas and Tamas. Sattva is the most light, most pure energy. Rajas is already more moving, more like energy, energy. And then Tamas is more uh, dull, inert, grounding energy. And this will bring you back to earth here in six chakra, Prithvi. And so now you have to throw And let's say if you throw a five, then nothing happens because you cannot move five steps. You have to exactly get there on the head of the snake and then you can again move here. Meanwhile, you can enjoy being there in quite an absolute state. No? But still a little tour around the world is required to move to cosmic consciousness. All right, so we had that one, you had a party from the envy of others and you moved back to feeling bad about everybody and yourself. Four. You are still trying to get born, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> This we have not yet had. This is also possible after entertainment. Not that you feel envy, but you are becoming a little bit like zero. Meaning, having entertainment, having fun, having a party, having a drink, having a dance, all these things requires a lot of energy. This is one of the main problems in second chakra. There's nothing wrong there. But whatever you do there, it consumes a lot of your prana, a lot of your life force. So after that, you can have like a little bit of hangover. You can feel a little bit like dull and nothing to do. Your mind has so much, you know, been active that you are in nullity. And definitely many people in our society are stuck there. Because they party too much, let's say. And that brings them always again back in this state of boredom. Also boredom is here. You know, it's like, oh, no. Until somebody again calls a party and then, okay, again party. But actually they are too much using up their energy. And this is especially true when you grow further into adulthood. Like 
at some point, you know, you just don't have the energy anymore to party every night. It's just like that. And if you will continue to do it, then during the day you will do nothing at all. Then you will just be there and, you know, take rest. No? So this is a place where people sleep during the day and, you know, laziness. This ring. <coughs> and you have four. One, two, three, four. Okay, so you are taking the arrow <coughs> up to here. <laughs> All right. This necklace? Yes. Yes? Okay. Sensual ring. Right. The shaft. Okay. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. This we already had. Bhuva <coughs> Loga dreaming. The watch. The watch. Ah, finally, somebody's having a party. One, two, three, four. <laughs> no? You are actually having it. It's good. And, uh, entertainment. Six also nullity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, sure. huh? Here? Yeah. Okay. So then you move back. Yeah. Ah, you joining the party. There you are. Three? Ah, oh, good, good. So, yes, yes, very good. Two earths. And um, we have actually earth here in two places. We have earth here as the physical plane. We have earth here also as Prithvi, the earth mother. In the Hindu view, earth is not just like a ball of earth, you know. It is a goddess. Somebody in this game no, took the role of the earth goddess. This is not always like you could say the same person who is dreaming it. No? It is a role that sometimes has to be played. And so now you are playing this role. You are now earth mother. Yeah, you've been with Brahma, you know, so you can't just come back and become a waitress, you know, you have to <laughs> become like, somebody important. <laughs> earth mother. <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah. Uh, and you have three? One, two, three. Another little snake here on second chakra level. Related to this one. This one is envy, this one is jealousy. The difference between jealousy and envy is not so very big. But one element of jealousy which is not so much there in envy is precisely fantasy. That's why it comes here. In jealousy we become a little bit crazy. 
like especially if you have a couple and one of the two becomes crazy about you know the other maybe cheating on him or her or something like that this is a little craziness and all kinds of fantasies are there oh no she's with this one and she's doing that and you know so this is a little craziness and this is not just of course about relationships this is also in general uh, like that and it comes here then in first chakra in greed and greed again also is a kind of craziness greed is not so much like you know i want something no this is not greed greed is wanting more than you need greed is like wanting everything greed is wanting as much as you can greed is counting what you have no? like the image of, of the guy in the evening is counting his gold coins no? this is greed no? like every evening he will count to see how much he has this is a craziness so this you also is there in fourth chakra and comes from jealousy jealousy which is envy combined with fantasy too much you know mind game Okay, right and now you have how much four one two three four okay another important arrow parmath selfless service selfless service means to do things for others without having any personal agenda no? you're not getting paid for it you're not getting benefit from it preferably also nobody knows so we don't also get a big ego out of it no? you're just doing it because it needs to be done and this brings you in middle of fifth chakra fifth chakra the chakra of knowledge jhana loka and why is that because here it is all about understanding right but understanding only for you is never going to bring you very far as long as you are still the one for whom you want to have all this understanding then you will be clouded you will be clouded by this selfishness but if you can drop this selfishness by doing selfless service and developing this selflessness then you can start to really understand see the bigger picture because that which is is there to understand is the bigger picture is not the small picture the small picture everybody can see it very easily <laughs> but the big picture requires that you a little bit drop your own need to understand you no longer so much want to understand for you you understand because you want to understand because you think understanding is important for everybody and when that comes then your mind becomes much more open you are not so much only seeing that which you want to see you are seeing that which is there to see so that is why it is there okay five and you are oh you were just again reborn five one two three four five now at least you having also a party <laughs> huh? yeah, yeah. <coughs> and you are i am in the corner yes right One, two, three, four, five. All right. Dreaming. Six. Here. So then we move this direction. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. We get an other arrow. The arrow of charity. Charity is different from selfless service, but it is related to selfless service. But it starts. Uh, No? on the other side of third chakra no? here at the end of the chakra we move beyond this selfishness no? which is essentially third chakra and we start doing things in selfless service but here we are still very much in the beginning and we are you know ambitious and we are maybe earning a lot or having a lot of power and then people come to us and say oh maybe you want to support this hospital or, or school for homeless children or something like that and you think oh, okay you know, yes of course they come to me you know to ask this because you know, I'm the one who's having you know, that power and you are giving some charity and then something funny happens something strange happens what happens then is that this is giving you a good feeling 
but a good feeling which is different than the good feeling you expect. Like normally a person like that who is doing charity expects to feel good because they expect to feel important. But when you then donate this money to this, let's say, uh, school for homeless children, and then you visit this school, and then all these children are very nice to you because you are like their savior. You bring bread there on the table and they look up to you, and, and then you feel loved, and your desire changes. So that is why here, this arrow moves you up to the four chakra, to your heart, to love as a desire. So their desire changes. So in that way in India it is said that charity, even though the original, let's say, motivation is not always so pure, that still it should be promoted because it brings people higher anyway. It brings them to opening a little bit the heart and going beyond their, their more selfish uh, nature. So very good. So then you can move from here to here. Here, which is the center actually of the whole game. I mean, if I exclude the last level there, which is the heart, which is the most important chakra. Very often people think seven chakra is the most important chakra. This is not true. Here is where the self resides. Many people think the self resides here. No, this is where mind is. Here, in the heart, the feeling nature, the sensing, that is where consciousness is. This is where your feeling nature is. This is the central place and whatever journeys you are making up here only are there so that you can better live here. Because sure, that is needed. Going up to four chakra only is not going to be enough because still there will not be enough understanding, not be enough pure consciousness, no? which is gained here. But here, no? even though you are still on the level of the elements here, of the air element, which connects us all, which is the same air, that we all breathe and you have this feeling, here you can really be and it is said that inside of the uh, heart chakra there is another kind of chakra, little, uh, the lotus of the heart they call it and then inside this lotus there lives uh, the self. So this is a very very important place and it is very easy to say that a person who is still only moving in the first three chakras, you could say is a little bit a poor person, does not have much. But once you are here, then you are a rich person, then your heart is open, then you are living a life which is nice to live. Whatever you've done up there doesn't mean so much, as long as you have that. So this is very important, always to go back to that, and to go back to your own good feeling. I say that so many times in the classes. Whatever you are doing, whether it is something in first chakra or in sixth chakra, it doesn't matter, as long as you feel good about it in your heart. If you don't feel good, let's say, about your desire to meditate, which may come from some idea that you have to do this, that you have to become enlightened ASAP, then this is not good. You have to first feel it here in your heart and then from there move forward. This is very central, uh, please. All right. Can it also happen on a smaller level or do you have to be like a company boss? To no, 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 no. Sure, it can happen on a very small level. That maybe a friend needs your help and you can give it and you give it. And sure. sure. The watch, right? How much uh, you have? Four. One, two, three, four. Plane of fantasy, nobody's been there yet, but I've talked about it, so here is where we are fantasizing. So you moving from entertainment and some fantasizing. Yes, very good. It's fun. You know, without that plane, there would be no art. You know, so very important place. Hmm? <laughs> Possible.
This one. Five. One, two, three, four, five. All right. Here we are at the end of the second chakra. The plane of joy, Harsha Loka. This is another thing that comes in second chakra and mostly can be found in young children. And maybe even more in girls than in boys, you know. Girls who can't stop giggling. This is here. Just the joy of life. The pure, you know, Hasya, we talked about that in a class not so long ago. The pure laughter, the pure joy. You laugh because you live, you know, like this comes there. And, uh, well, as we grow older, it's a little more difficult maybe, but still important to keep that. And when we have fun, to really have fun in a pure way. Enjoying life, enjoying everything. You know, and not limit it so much. This is what is often... It's the same as uh, just stopping in a park and being happy that... Yeah, yeah. That playing with children as an adult. <coughs> playing with children is one of the best ways to do it. Because children have that so much. Yeah. Children can be extremely enthusiastic by, you know, some nut they find in a park or, you know, some leaf. Or, you know, for us it's a little more difficult, but when they do it, we can also see it. We can also enjoy it in, in the same way. So playing with children is very, very good. Yeah. Also very good, actually, because then you set aside your own no, desires and then you are trying to serve them. This is then a little bit no, selfless service here, also very good. All right. Yeah, you noticed when you grow up, at some kind of level, you, you lose it. This. Well, you lose it because you think there are too many problems. You get too serious. And the main thing in yoga is to stop being so serious. To become very serious about not being so serious. And to take everything more light. And to know that whatever happens, anyhow, it comes and goes and is not so important. I mean, that's a, a different story. But uh, it's about being able to laugh with yourself, not in a sarcastic way, but in a real, you know, like funny way. Om, no problem. It's a very good mantra we talked about also in the Hasya class. Huh? To be able to joke about your own ego, about your own desires, about your own problems, about your own failures and all these things. To be able to laugh at it is the best way. Then immediately it becomes more light. It doesn't make those problems go away, but it makes them more light. And that's you know, the best thing to do. Hmm? So, uh, but then deep meditation definitely also, you can come out and be like a child and be crazy, playful, joyful, laughing. This is as an adult where it definitely also can come. And then a little bit of that joy, a little bit of that humor you know, will always stay with you. Or at least for a long time it will stay with you and it will change you. 